Let's suppose that we want to produce a plot of the surface z, which is a function of x and y. For example, z equals sine of x plus y. To do this computationally, we need to construct a grid of x, y values and calculate z at each point. I've drawn the coordinate system in a left-handed orientation, where the x-axis runs from left to right, and the y-axis is rotated clockwise by 90 degrees. We'll see when we plot 3D figures in MATLAB that MATLAB actually uses a right-handed coordinate system by default, so the y-axis is reversed. But the representation given here most closely matches the way that the z-matrix is built up in MATLAB. The z-matrix, which represents the heights, has x increasing this way and y increasing this way, just like in the figure on the left. Along each row in the matrix, y is constant, just like going along these lines in the grid here. And down each column in the matrix, x is constant, just like going along these grid lines here. So the function values zij, in which i and j represent the row and column numbers in the matrix, are given by applying the function to the values xj and yi. The vectors of chosen values for x and y don't have to be the same length, and that means that the matrix Z doesn't have to be square. We could construct matrix Z using a loop over the values in vectors x and y. Let's have a look at how it could be done for our example, sine of x plus y. We start by defining the x and y values, and then we fill in the values in matrix Z according to the definition, in which the element in row i and column j is given by applying the function to the jth x value and the ith y value. This can be done by looping over the row and column numbers. The implementation here fills in the columns one by one. The step here sets up a grid full of zeros and the values in each grid location are then overwritten in each step during the loop. We can plot the resulting surface using the surf command. X and Y are the vectors of X and Y values and Z is the corresponding surface height at each grid point. Notice that the y-axis is reversed from my earlier drawing. If we want to, it is possible to change the axis direction in MATLAB. The command set can be used to change the properties of an object. GCA gets the current set of axes, and then we can change the property wider, which represents the y-direction, to reverse. Now we have y increasing this way, as in my drawing. So the important step in producing these figures is constructing the z-matrix of heights, and we did that here by using a nested loop. Now you may be wondering if there's a way to vectorize this operation, and there is. All of the steps here, from lines 4 to line 12, can be replaced by just two lines. We start off by using the mesh grid command on the two vectors x and y. The outputs will be two matrices. We'll call them uppercase x and y. We'll go back to digital pen and paper to have a look at what the outputs x and y look like. In matrix x, every row is the same as vector x. And in matrix y, every column is the same as vector y. So x is repeated row-wise and y is repeated column-wise. Then, by using matrices x and y, it's easy to create matrix z with element-wise operations. You can see that by typing in sine x plus y, we'll get the matrix here. So that x changes along this way, just like in matrix x, and y changes down this way, just like in matrix y. 
and this was the desired result. Looking back at MATLAB, what we want now then is sine of matrix X plus matrix Y. And we have replaced all of this code here with these two lines. The code here more or less provides the template for producing any two-dimensional plot. We create the vectors of coordinates, combine them using mesh grid, and then this allows us to use element-wise operations to construct the array of heights. As a final point, I'll just note that we could have created our own mesh grid function using matrix methods.